What's up guys? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver, Colorado and today I wanted to share with you guys um, one technique that I use to test myself um, quality control wise on how well I'm cleaning out my grow tents. So it's really important especially when you're scaling up production or even as a hobby grower you really want to keep your contamination levels to a manageable level. Um, the goal is zero, but um, you know there's different fluctuations throughout the year as far as seasonal spore loads go. It's right at the beginning of, uh, or end of September, beginning of October here in Colorado. So it's at the early season of when all the fall mushrooms are gonna start sporulating. So that along with you know, ambient um, fungi that are in the atmosphere like trichoderma and penicillium. Just um, a, a lot of the fungi that are in the soils start to come alive in fall. Um, they want to spread their spores before winter and usually they start to come up again in the springtime. So those are two important times where you really want to be on top of your um, cleaning. So one way that I um, regularly will test myself, especially for um, air contamination, is with these DRBC. So DRBC plates are used to quantify uh, yeast and mold that are in the air. And one way to do that is to um, use a settle plate technique. So it's as simple as just opening some Petri dishes inside your grow room for a very specific amount of time and then incubating them at um, about 72 degrees for 48 hours and then you quantify the colony forming units that are on the plate and that will give you a number and then you can track your progress throughout the year um, by correlating those numbers with um, the different cleaning cycles that you do so you can really hone in your cleaning process um, throughout the grow. All right, so I'm about to clean this tent. So usually um, I'll do a settle plate for about 20 minutes exposed to the air before and after. So DRBC has uh, some chemicals that will prevent um, bacteria from growing on the plate. So this is, you know, it's not a full um, spectrum of, you know, any kind of contamination that's gonna be in there, but rather it's just a tool to gauge on how well you're cleaning your rooms. So it's really good practice to do a before and after, and you can do that weekly or monthly or um, bi-monthly, as long as you know, you're know you keeping your cleaning procedures up, you should see consistent results. So um, I'll go on into the grow room and I'll show you how I do this. You just really need to label um, what what tent you're in and then open it to the air for 20 minutes and then after you clean your tent um, do the same thing and then you'll have a before and after recording of how much contamination is in your air so right. i've got my settle plate i have not opened it yet and what i'm going to do is just set this on this cart here and then set my timer for 20 minutes so that's going to be the initial um, reading before I clean my tent you can see I've got a bunch of already fruited blocks they've you know some of them have had their third flush already so I'm getting ready just to clear this whole room out and I just want to take a record of the spore load right at as these bags are about to leave and then I'll do another one um, after I clean the room and then I'll know the spore load as I'm putting my new bags in and um, that's just a good way to test yourself and keep you on point. All right, so it's been 20 minutes now. I'm just gonna go ahead and close up this settle plate here. Um, you wanna be careful that you don't touch the surface of the auger. And um, some of you asked me what these yellow um, pieces of tape are in the grow room so I like to use these sticky tapes to um, use them as another 
uh, quality control for any insects. So once um, you get fungus gnats in your grow room, it's almost impossible to get rid of them. So it's important to be extra vigilant. And these little yellow sticky squares you can buy um, on Amazon for super cheap. And I put them all over as a um, like a radar detection system for any potential bugs that might be entering. So um, you can see that there's no fungus gnats on here, but once in a while I'll catch one and then I'll know it's a deep, it's a great time to do a deep clean and kind of really go on the hunt for fungus gnats. Um, they can be a real nuisance, especially in the summer. So if you ever see any of these yellow squares, um, that's what they are. It's kind of just like a, a detection system for any fungus gnats. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove any of these old blocks from my room and then I'll go through and spray um, my whole shelf with hydrogen peroxide. I'll let that sit for about three or four minutes and then I'll wipe that dry. And then I like to finish my deep clean with um, either a 15% bleach solution or some sporicide and that way I get a really clean start to when I move in my new bags. So um, I'll go through that clean and then we'll do our after plate and um, incubate those for a couple days and then I'll show you the results so that we can um, kind of keep track of how often you should be cleaning your tents or um, I guess what's a good procedure to do that. All right. All right guys, so I let the bleach, um, the 15% bleach sit on the shelving for about 15 minutes and now I'm just gonna wipe it. Um, I really like using these PVC pipes because of how easy they are to keep clean. It's really easy just to go through and every single time I'm flipping my bags, I just wipe all these down and we're good to go. All right guys, so I've got my shelves all cleaned out and um, I usually will do like a wipe down from the ceiling to the floor, but it looks pretty clean and I kind of wanted to get some um, colonies on this plate. So I'll start, um, start the timer at 20 minutes and usually I shoot for under 10 colonies. Um, that's a really good amount. Um, 15 to 20 is still good. So we'll come back and incubate this and um, check our results. All right guys, so it's been four days since we took our air sample um, on the settle plates and I'll t tell you how to read these results. So you can see there's significantly more colonies on this plate than this plate. Um, this is just like a little piece of debris right here, but we got one colony, so that's gonna be one. CFU, colony forming unit. If you come over to this plate, I'll just sector it out into quarters to make it a little easier. And then we can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 28, 17, So we got 41 CFUs, and then you can multiply that by four. So that's gonna be 164 CFUs. And this demonstrates not only the importance of cleaning, but the importance of doing quality control on your fruiting room. So this tells me right here that I should be cleaning maybe a day before that I did this. And ideally, you're gonna be getting these results before you move in some new bags so they don't get contaminated. All right guys, and I've got an update on the Cordyceps project. So it's been 
20 days since inoculation and you can see um, we brought in some oats that have colonized uh, a tub that f fully colonized and then we've got all of our different phenotypes and you can look here the substrate with the least amount has some really promising growth on it um, you can see some little pins forming on the side and then some of the substrates with a lot of or some of the jars with a lot of substrate um, they're still like they turned orange but I haven't seen any pins yet so this kind of tells me that um, maybe less is more in this case with the substrate. It definitely colonized all of these at the same rate, but I feel like there's so much nutrients in these bigger jars that it might take a little bit longer for these to pin. So that's the update. I hope you guys enjoy our videos. Um, give us a thumbs up if you like our content. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more videos like this. Um, share our videos if you think anyone else will find them useful and check out our Etsy um, I'm gonna be posting a bunch of DRBC plates and we've got a couple new um, Mixes of auger so I've got PDA on there now potato dextrose auger and MEA which those are two interchangeable um, auger recipes for production and then I've got some V9 auger that is gonna be for your more difficult to cultivate strains. It has a lot of nutrients um, and it is more prone to contamination, but you can use it for bringing back older strains or um, like more difficult to cultivate strains. And then also we've got some um, water auger for cloning or um, if you're interested in breeding cordyceps like these. All right, guys, so I'll keep you posted on the updates. We've got some little baby side pins, but I'm hoping that, you know, some of these, um, some of these phenotypes will start pinning on top soon. And I'm really excited. We got some uh, really vibrant orange on the bottom. So if anything, that's an indicator that we're going to have to do less substrate next time. But all right, guys, till next time, much love.